Victory Monday, Washington Commanders Nation. Now, while it's Victory Monday for us for the seventh time this season, there's a team out there who just lost seven games in a row and fired their head coach this morning. And that team has a number one cornerback currently up for sale at the trade deadline. Could Washington make a run at number one cornerback Marshawn Lattimore? Let's talk about it. Washington just completed its seventh victory of the season. So once again, it is victory Monday for the home team, and it feels lovely. Now, while this season is going phenomenally, and we're not done yet, we still got more food on our plate as these last eight weeks of the season are coming, the trade deadline is now 30 hours away. And Washington has apparently been working the phones for a cornerback and possibly a wide receiver as well. The New Orleans Saints started this season 2-0. Clint Kubiak's offense was on and smoking. Marshawn Lattimore's turning back the clock. I mean, he's only 28, but he was looking 25 again. And then they proceeded to lose seven games in a row. And this morning, fired head coach Dennis Allen. And while Tom Pelissero says they don't expect to be in fire cell mode, They've gotten calls and definitely could move the likes of cornerback Marshawn Lattimore, but a widespread fire sale seems unlikely. And where does Washington fit into that equation? You've seen the cornerback room. We've got our rookie second rounder, Mikey Sandra still, who's a nickel slot guy um, on the outside. And he's not doing bad on the outside. Benjamin St. Juice is a lottery ticket every Sunday. You're either going to see a terrible performance or a very solid performance. Noah Igbenogany is a solid seat filler, and Emmanuel Forbes is Emmanuel Forbes. So when you look at the skeleton of the commander's roster, cornerback is still by far the biggest need out there. We even look formidable and more than solid at the safety position. Quan Martin, and Jeremy Chin are playing out of their minds right now. Jeremy Chin on a one-year prove-it deal is looking like he wants that contract. He's proving it through nine weeks of the season. But Marshawn Lattimore would walk in D.C. day one as the undisputed cornerback one on this team. And it was allowed Joe Witt Jr. to play a lot more man defense. Joe Witt definitely wants to be in man a lot. And he pulls it out in what feels like inopportune times. We just don't got the facilities for that right now, big man. We don't got the facilities to be running man on a consistent basis. We don't got man corners. Marshawn Lattimore is versatile, but that is a number one man corner. And he is still respected by quarterbacks league wide. He is not targeted. He's still a blanket shut one side of the field down guy. He has fight in him. He has dog in him. Former top 15 pick. I believe it was the 11th pick of the New Orleans Saints back in 2017, back when the Saints came out with the offensive and defensive rookie of the year in one season. Marshawn's looking for a new home. I'd be ready to get the hell out of New Orleans as well because they need a culture reset. Now, why would the Saints trade a number one corner? Because you've heard me come on this channel a ton of times saying, Number one corners don't grow on trees, and it's very rare that one becomes available at the deadline. So why would Marshawn Lattimore be available? Well, to start, the team is ass, and they're looking to start over. They're going to be hiring a new coach. They're going to be they're going to be hiring all kinds of things this offseason, and they're in the mix for the top pick in the NFL draft. Coming off a loss to the Carolina Panthers and seven losses in a row, they pulled the plug on Dennis Allen and. I asked my boy, my boy Buckle, shout out to my best friend. He is a diehard Saints fan. He's even covered the team at points of his career. I asked him about Marshawn. I said, tell me about 2024 version of Marshawn Lattimore. He said, he's actually having a really good season. It's just always health with him. Still not many games where he, where he steps on the field where he isn't the best cornerback on either team. But y'all better be ready to outbid the Kansas City Chiefs because they're ready to go. And to that, I say, why do people keep helping the Chiefs? 
Why do pe- I understand you take your compensation to whoever's sending it to you? They just got D Hop, they just got Josh Uche. Let's not let them pull off the holy trinity of trade deadline deals and add Marshawn Lattimore as well. Y'all really finna let the Chiefs with an already top three to five defense in this league, maybe the top defense in the league. Y'all gonna let them pair Trent McDuffie with Marshawn Lattimore and just give Mahomes all the weaponry to just go to the Super Bowl every season, which they already have? Like, no, come on, man. Come on, man. But I think a third, a conditional third round pick would get this trade done. We've seen value all over the place, and you know, corners don't become available. I think the Saints would try to gun for a second rounder for Marshawn, but values all over the place. We're talking about a New Orleans Saints team that's going to be cap struck $76 million over the cap. And we've been seeing the Saints do this for years. They've been 50 plus million in debt to salary cap for the last few years. It didn't stop them from adding guys like Derek Carr on big contracts, but Maybe it's time the Saints say, let's bite the bullet. Let's get some of this shit out of here. We love Marshawn, but let's stack some draft capital for whoever we bring in, whether that's Mike Vrabel, Ben Johnson, et cetera. My boy Buckles thinks he wants Vrabel. He thinks they're going to probably go like Aaron Glenn or something. But we're going to see. We're going to see. But I think Marshawn gets moved by the deadline tomorrow. We're, what, 29 hours away from the trade deadline? And Adam Peters has been sniffing. What better time to add a guy who's under contract until 2026 and only owed like one million for the rest of this season? What better time to add that to our QB room? Uh, we don't love Benjamin St. Juice. We don't love Sandra still on the outside. We don't love Igbenogany. You know what? We start to like them so much better when they're not asked to do more. And you put a Marshawn Lattimore on one side of the field, all of a sudden, St. Juice being the decoy, Noah Igbenogany being the decoy, Mikey Sanders still going back to the inside. All of a sudden, that defense is looking like, okay, they got a top notch corner now that can guard top notch receivers. You know about the long standing rivalry Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore have had in this league. He does get a lot of ticky tack and lingering injuries, but he's still 28. And I think a part of what's happening right now could be a trade standoff type situation. He hasn't come out and asked for a trade, but you know guys make business decisions when they can be available. You know that. So I'm very interested in Marshawn Lattimore, but the other options, let's talk about them as well. The option I want no parts of Washington making at the deadline is Tredavious White, the cornerback for the Los Angeles Rams. That boy has went through catastrophic injury after catastrophic injury, and he's completely rinsed, washed, tumbled, and dried in the Lord's year of 2024. No parts of Tredavious White. So I need us to shoot our shot for Marshawn Lattimore. They either need to tell us no, or tell us, no, we shipped him to Kansas City. You sit there, you deliberate, you go back and forth, you rebuttal compensation until they tell you no, or they tell you we're shipping him to Kansas City. Tredavious White, that's a big no for me, dog. Denzel Ward, I do not see the Cleveland Browns trading Denzel Ward. While he's 27 with six concussion, that is a top-notch technique cornerback one as well. Don't see him getting moved. Maybe Washington spins the block and checks in on Greg Newsom one more time. Cleveland Browns corner out of Northwestern, former first-round pick Greg Newsom. he's owed a contract, and Cleveland may not want to give him a contract in 2025, so they may ship him out of there. Also, the season's lost there, so they may want to cut ties and get some compensation. Also, don't think that's going to cost too much. So if it's not Marshawn Lattimore, give me Greg Newsom or the one that we've heard Washington connected to from multiple websites, Jonathan Jones of the New England Patriots. Not as sexy, not as spicy, not as young as the other options that I mentioned so far, but this is the one that's going to cost the least. He's an upcoming free agent in his thirty-one age 31 season, and he start, he's plug and play. Starting corner, 
Not the sexiest option, but he's better than everything Washington has on the roster right now. It would probably only cost Washington at most, a, what, a sixth round pick, a conditional sixth, a seventh maybe. You know, you're getting a 31-year-old corner off the roster. That's not going to be expensive at all. So realistically, Shoot your shot for Marshawn Lattimore until he's either shipped to somewhere like Kansas City or they say, you know what, we're not trading him. Option number two, Greg Newsom of the Cleveland Browns. Option number three, if those two do not work out, call the New England Patriots. Yo, we'll give you a six for Jonathan Jones. Be done with it. You got a starting cornerback for the end of the year. You could talk contract if he deserves it. Or we can move on to younger options in free agency. And all it will cost you is a sixth or seventh round pick to do so. Washington has a litany of options at the cornerback position. And according to insiders and pundits worldwide, Adam Peters is sniffing the market. And we are now less than 29 hours away from the NFL trade deadline. Marshawn Lattimore to D.C., please. Fingers crossed. I know y'all been in my comments and in the chat all year manifesting Marshawn Lattimore to D.C. It would be a beautiful fucking day. Tomorrow, I'm going to go live and we're going to count down to the deadline. So hopefully nothing happens today. But if it does, I'll be on here with a breaking news impromptu stream for Marshawn Lattimore. But that's all I got for right now. Victory Monday for the seventh time this season. We're going to celebrate today and tomorrow. And then Wednesday, we start talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's all I got for right now. Hail to the Washington Commanders. Hail Victory Monday. Talk to y'all soon.